Yes, I know. I know it's the exact same set as it was in Carnival Capers, but you know what? If Hey Entertainment can make the exact same episode for four seasons, then I can make some identical-looking sets for two episodes. Hello, everyone. Today, we're looking at another very boring, very forgettable release, Thomas and the Toy Workshop. So this was put out onto DVD um, a little over a month after Carnival Capers on September 18th of 2007. And it was also put out in a couple of bonus packs, one of which being... This one with Thomas and the Really Brave Engines, and there was also one recently put out called, or known as Thomas's Holiday Collection, which we will briefly touch on later because I have some rants about that. Anyways, um, before we look at the release, there is actually some interesting trivia behind this. This is the very first new series release to be put out by um, Anchor Bay. Um, 20th Century Fox kind of lost the rights after Carnival Capers, even though they put out Engines and Escapades, which is kind of weird. But I assume Entertainment was like, you know what? Anchor Bay is putting out the classic series. We'll just ask them to put out the new series as well, and they can make double their money. I don't know. But yeah, uh, it's nothing too remarkable or outstanding. It's just very weird. Although I will say, it is very, very jarring to see that, you know... um. Hop on board and explore the island of Soda with everyone's number one friend, Thomas the Tank Engine, on a release that is all about, you know, crappy season 9 episodes. I just thought that was kind of funny. Anyways, um, let's take a look here. So, this poster art is kind of interesting. Um, you got the Thomas logo up there, Thomas and the Toy Workshop. What I absolutely love about this is that they put toy in some blocks. That's really, really cool. Uh, they could have just totally typed it out in the exact same font as this, but they went the extra mile, so that's really nice. There's Thomas right there, pulling some... Oh, that's just... Is that one? Oh, that's two. There are two narrow-gauge trucks right there, which is very, very strange to me. Um, but he's got some toys in them. And there's the toy workshop itself, um, with some obviously photoshopped on figures. This poster art is kind of lackluster and kind of boring, but you know what? It's fine. On the side here, excuse me, Hey Entertainment logo, Thomas and Friends, Thomas and the Toy Workshop. Um, I believe this is only a thing with the Lionsgate reprint where we have this um, early 2000s Thomas in the um, portrait there. I believe on the original Anchor Bay version, um, this Thomas was put on there. I'm not sure, but whatever. What? Anchor? This is not an Anchor Bay release? It's a Lionsgate release, I know. Um. This is actually a reprint from, I assume, 2009, 2010, around that time. So, I don't have an Anchor Bay version of this. I've never seen one before, so I'll have to hop on that sometime soon. But, you know what, it's fine. Oh, I got the same stupid one card back as we always get. Thomas and the Toy Workshop. A screenshot from Thomas and the Toy Workshop. And that is from... Percy in the Oil Painting, possibly? Um, our description says, All aboard, Thomas, Percy, and their friends learn about the spirit of Sodor and the secret of the cliffs. Join them as they prepare for the grand opening of the toy workshop and find out what lies at the end of the rainbow. Hop on board for these non-stop adventures today. Cool. And then our little DVD features thing consists of six fun-filled episodes, two sing-along songs, a DVD game, Paint My Color, and the Character Gallery. Right down there is a, a link to the website. And on the topic of stories, I will list the stories we have um, on this release. We have Thomas and the Statue, Henry and the Elephant, Bold and Brave, Thomas and the Toy Workshop, Person in the Oil Painting, and Thomas and the Rainbow. These titles are so repetitive, so unoriginal. Only one of them, actually, no, they all say and, but only one of them does not say and the. You know, it's Thomas and the Percy and the Henry and the... It's just so boring. Ugh. Here is the disc. It's okay. See? It's got the Inga Bay logo on there. And then it's in this cheap kind of plastic crappy case, you know. It's pretty lame. And like I showed earlier, we do have this double feature to look at. I believe we looked at this when we looked at Thomas and the Really Brave Engines, um, but that was a long time ago, so my bad if I didn't. But yep, this is the side we want to look at. It's virtually the same as that, so you don't have to look at that too much. Um, yep, 
it is featured on the top there, and then there is a screenshot of Thomas from that artwork. And then here is the back. It's exactly the same. And then I will briefly open it up, try not to get my reflection in, and turn this around. There you go. I believe that it has never been taken out of the little tray or whatever. I've had that for almost two years, I want to say. I got it in 2019, same day as Big Will Big Adventures came out on DVD. So that's been in my collection for almost three years, actually. Wow, like three and a, or two and a half years. That's crazy. But yeah, I'll tell the brief story of why I got that. The only reason, or the only reason why I wanted that was to have a copy of Thomas and the Really Brave Engines, because I did not own a DVD copy at that time. But then a couple of months later, I got just a standard copy. I think it was like a year later, actually. So there you go. Now, this release is, again, very boring. I actually rewatched half of it um, before I started this because I wanted to freshen up my memory on the hit era. And holy crap, it was so boring. Um, we'll go through the episodes briefly. Um, Thomas and the Statue is actually an anomaly in the Thomas and Friends like hit entertainment era. It's not a bad story. I mean, the characters are actually like characters, and they actually like have conflict with each other in this one, unlike most of the hit era. But it's still a very boring story. Um, but it's probably one of the better ones out of the hit era. I'm not saying it's good or anything, but you know what I'm saying. Henry and the Flagpole, incredibly boring. You could literally swap out Henry with any other character. It would not make a difference. Bold and Brave, I, I just watched that episode like five minutes ago, and I don't remember anything about it. I know Diesel was in it, though. So, Thomas and the Toy Workshop, another very, very boring story. I remember... It was really cool as a kid to see Annie and Clarabelle and the toy train behind Thomas. I thought that was, I always thought that was kind of visually pleasing. Person in the oil painting is also kind of interesting, but not really. And then Thomas and the Rainbow is also very, very boring. Although that crash with the telegraph pole was mildly interesting. <laughs> there are also two songs in here. Those being Be Brave and the Engine Roll Call. Uh, fitting that Be Brave comes after the episode Bold and Brave, so. Yep, I have also taken the liberty of reordering these stories to make them um, make a little more co coherent sense. All these are from Season 9, by the way, so. Um, Thomas and the Toy Workshop obviously has to be first, even though that's not the first episode of Season 9. The first one is actually Percy and the Oil Painting, which comes next. Then we have Thomas and the Rainbow, Thomas and the Statue, Henry and the Flagpole, and Bold and Brave. So, before we end the episode, I would like to, I would like to talk about a release. I don't know why I sounded Indian there. My apologies. Um, in 2017, right before Thomas on Home Media was basically canned, there was a release put out known as Thomas's Holiday Collection. It featured six discs, I believe. I don't have it. Um, I wish I did, but um, it featured a bunch of. Christmas slash winter theme stories or releases, and this was included. The only kind of wintry Christmas themed episode on here is Thomas and the Toy Workshop and kind of um, Thomas and the Statue, but they're not like Christmas or holiday themed. They're more snow and winter themed. So very stupid. You could have put like Santa's Little Engine. The Christmas engines on there, but nope, you wanted to give the kids a crappy hit era release. So, another thing I would like to touch on um, this is mainly about the episodes, not the release. I am so sick of like 30 seconds into the episode, every episode, every single story has this problem. It always has a montage at the beginning or talking about like, oh, it was cold on Sodor. It was warm on Sodor. It was raining on Sodor. And then 30 seconds into the episode, it's always like, Sir Topham Pat came to the sheds. He had an important announcement. A new blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Thomas, you must go to the docks and pick up the blah, blah, blah. It's so repetitive and annoying and degrading. And I'm so glad they got rid of that whole thing. It's absolutely the one of the most annoying aspects of this era. Like, it's... 
not as annoying as like the rhyming or the whole like three strikes formula but wow when you watch the whole hit era like you watch a whole season all the way through it's so noticeable and so aggravating and i literally wanted to punch my skull every single time he said that and then how that michael brandon the sin of the thomas narr- the devil of the thomas narrators was narrating where every single voice is either really annoying like this or like what it's just like his normal voice or I'm Henry, I'm Edward, I'm Toby. Now stop talking about the statue, Thomas. Nobody wants to talk to you anymore. Like, shut up. Michael Brennan is tolerable in some episodes, but in especially these like earlier, like season 9, season 10 episodes, he's just awful. But that's a whole other topic for another video. So... That's all we have for Thomas Lynch Toy Workshop. It is a very, it is a very, very, very boring, very bad, very forgettable release. Please do not buy this unless you actually like enjoy these episodes, which I don't know anybody who does. Listen, I watched these episodes as a kid. I did not enjoy this. This was a very boring release. I would, I much rather, I much rather would have watched Cranky Bugs, Spills and Chills, um. What else did I have? Anything from the classic series, basically. <laughs> yeah, th- these hit air episodes just don't do it for me. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks again for watching. Next week, we're looking at a very, very, very festive release. You know what I'm saying? We're looking at the ultimate Christmas release. Ultimate Christmas. <laughs> Fitting. So I will see you then. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.